from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Nothing, nothing. From the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. What can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus? Nothing, nothing. Then conquerors through him who loved us, through him who 
from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. What can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus? What can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus? Nothing, 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 yeah! That's right! Welcome to Kids Space today. Hope you've been having a fabulous week. And I know some of you got to go to school in person. Yay! Hopefully that went fantastic for you. Hope you enjoyed it. Got to see some of your friends. Um, so I hope school's going great for you. And thanks for joining us today for our lesson. Um, you know, I've got some bananas here today. Who likes bananas? Um, Mr. Wayne eats a banana every morning. He really likes bananas. I eat them some. I love them. I love them in banana pudding. Do you? Anybody like banana splits? Bananas are yummy. The thing that's cool about bananas is like, they like stick together, right? I mean, they come in a bunch. So today we're talking about faithfulness and we're talking about sticking together. We're talking about how God sticks with us as well. God is always faithful to us. Just like this one banana is stuck with the rest of these, we're all stuck together because of God's love. Um, so faithfulness means sticking by the people we love. It means worshiping God and God only. It means when we say we're going to do something, we're going to do it. And it means that we don't give up, we don't quit, and we don't walk away. Faithful people are people other people can count on. They're, your friends can count on you. Uh, your teacher can count on you. Your parents can count on you. Faithfulness is a sign that we belong to God and a sign that other people can trust us. If we give our word, we're going to see it through. So this week, let's look at how God can help us to become more faithful. Faithful like he is to us. Not only to our loved ones, but those others around us that maybe we don't know as well. As uh, in the fruit of the Spirit this week, faithfulness, it's kind of go bananas. And let's be faithful, not only to God, but to our family and friends as well. Let's check out our no budget production skit at the Somerset Fruit Stand. Hello! Um, welcome to Somerset Fruit Stand. Good morning, Jay. Mind if I ask you a question? <sighs> no! I was just wondering if... No, dude! I said no! I can't ask a question? It doesn't matter. You don't have to. I already know the answer, and it's no. No to what? No, we will not be matching our competitor's special on banana. What competitor is and what special? <sighs> Gary's Old Town Fruit Stand and Taco Bar. He's offering buy one, get one free on everything. Everything, including tacos? Uh, except the Mexican bean dip. Huh, I haven't heard of that one. Yeah, well, now that you've heard, you can go down there and get your double bananas, double your tacos, and double everything. Except the bean dip. You catch on quick. Look, Jay, that sounds like a terrific deal. All other customers took him up on it. Yeah. Nah, I'm not going to. What do you mean? I believe in being faithful. I'm faithful to God, faithful to my commitments. I even want to make myself faithful to this little fruit stamp. Uh, I don't think those are the same thing. They are to me. Faithfulness is a fruit of the spirit. Uh, I should have seen that one coming. <laughs> yeah, you should have. I want to be faithful in all things, 
whether it's my walk with God, uh, keeping my word, or supporting a small business like this fruit stand. I want to always be faithful in big and the little things because that's one of the fruits that God wants to see in my life. Well, uh, I know my boss appreciates you. Really? Mm hmm And me too. I know I don't act like it, but you really have taught me a lot. Wow. Well, that makes me happy. Makes me even more determined to stay faithful in the little things. <sighs> even if that means paying for two bunches of bananas? Whatever it costs, I'll be faithful. You sure are a faithful guy. Oh, thanks. Bye. Bye. <laughs> All right, so faithfulness. I hope you enjoyed that skit today. Um, so faithfulness is what God wants from us in our walk with Jesus. He wants us to be people who finish what we start. He wants us to um, commit to whatever we're doing and give everything we got, whether it's doing a book report at school, he wants us to give everything we got. Whether it's your mom and dad give you a chore, it's doing your very best for them and getting the job done. Whether it's being a youth group and working together on a project as a team, it's everybody working together, being faithful to the, to the end result. He wants us to be faithful to him and to choose to do the right thing, even when we might be tempted to do the wrong thing. So to be faithful um, to God and what he asks us to do. So today we're going to talk about David again. Last week we talked about David and we talked about his friendship with Jonathan, King Saul's son. And we saw a faithfulness there in that friendship where they promised each other they would make sure that nothing happened 
to their kids or their families as they went on um, and and parted. Um, So God had chose David to be king of Israel when he was just a boy. And if you remember that story, the prophet um, Samuel anointed him with oil. And in the lesson today, in our story today, and remember in the Bible stories, they are true stories. Some stories are fiction or not true, but these are true stories. And so in this one, we're going to see an opportunity where we see David's faithfulness to King Saul, even when King Saul was not treating him very well or fairly. See, David was the man that God had chosen to be the king after Saul. When David was still a boy, the prophet Samuel, as we said, visited him and anointed him with oil as a representation that he is the one that God has chosen. So God chose David to be this king because David was faithful to God. We talked earlier that King Saul had lost his way with God, that he was no longer faithful to God, that he was chasing after other things and other gods. So David lived in a time when men um, would become king, sometimes by killing a king and his family. So it was not uncommon for that to happen in this day and age, um, so that someone would try to steal the throne. David had a man with him, uh, a group of like 400, and they were ready to help him do that. They wanted to kill King Saul, but David did not want that to happen. And he wanted to follow what God's plan was for him. So David showed great faithfulness when he refused to kill King Saul. See, King Saul had been chasing David. and King Saul had like 3,000 men. And they were chasing him through this area, this mountainous area in this desert. And they were trying to kill him. So King Saul was bent on making sure David was destroyed. So David and his band of men, 400, were hiding out and trying to uh, stay clear of Saul and his men. Well, one day, David and his men um, saw Saul and his men coming, and so they went and they hid in a cave for protection. Well, while they were in the cave, Saul entered the cave, and David's men were like, this is your chance. This is your chance to kill King Saul and be the king of Israel. David wouldn't have anything to do with it. Instead, though, while Saul was there, he went and cut off the corner of his robe. Then he stepped back quietly. Saul was totally unaware of David's presence. Saul leaves the cave, and David comes out, and he says to Saul, What have I done to you? that you would try to kill me. The Lord is my witness. I I have in my hand a piece of cloth from your robe where I could have killed you, but I would not hurt the king of Israel, God's anointed. Saul was shocked when he saw that David held the corner of his robe And he said to David that day, you will be the king of Israel. Your kingdom will be established. And he was humbled and said he was unworthy for what David had done for him. How David had spared his life in the cave. See, David was faithful to do what God wanted to do. He could have followed the ways of of the men that were with him that wanted him to kill Saul, he had the perfect opportunity to do so. But he chose to do what God would want him to do and wait on God's perfect timing to place him on the throne as the king of Israel. Saul and him made a promise that day that they would not harm each other's families. And David honored that as we see later on down the road as we talked about with his son, Mephibosheth. So David was faithful first to God and then to the plan that God had put before him. He never wanted to harm Saul and he never did. He always referred to him as the Lord's anointed. Because of this, David uh, 
became the king of Israel like God had planned. And he was known um, as a man who followed God's own heart. Um, so David was a wonderful example for us. And we've talked about before how he wrote the book of Psalms. And you should take a look at this sometime. Um, especially some of you that are older and that are reading and working on having some quiet time. But um, Psalms is a wonderful collection that helps us see the heart of King David. Well, what about you and me? You know, faithfulness is more than just going to church each, each week. It's more than just singing the songs on the videos. It's more than that. It means choosing to follow Jesus. It means choosing God's way. It means that when we have a group of friends that might be telling us to do this, we know what God's way is and we say, no, we won't do it. It means being honest. It means being truthful. It means following Jesus no matter what. It means following Jesus and doing the right thing when it's hard. Sometimes we're tempted and we're faced with sin. Maybe it's stealing something or lying or cheating or whatever it might be. We might be in a moment where we might be all by ourselves and no one would know, but we're still faithful to God and we choose the right thing because we want to honor God, because we love him. So faithful, faithfulness means we keep our word. We commit to doing something um, and we see it through. Um, when we say we're going to participate in a project, we do it. We show up and we serve. We commit to doing our part on the project at school. Um, we make time for God's word and for um, spending time in prayer with him. So this week, I want you to think about how you can be more faithful. How can you be faithful to God? How can you be faithful to your family and friends? How, you will, how will you stick by them? So how will you stand up for God this week? How will you let people know that you are faithful to God? So this week, I want to challenge you to work on the fruit of faithfulness. Stick to your commitments, especially those of you that made that commitment for Jesus. Stick with that commitment. Follow him, and he's going to do crazy, amazing things in your life, just like he did through King David. All right, let's listen to our song.
Hey guys, hope you'll enjoy Gateway Kids. I love that song, Faithful. So this week, don't forget, how will you be faithful this week? To God at home, at school, with your family, friends. Remember, God is always faithful to you. Well, I hope you have a great rest of your day and enjoy this quiz on David Spares Saul.